Hi, my name is Guy Alter. I am a Reiki master more than 20 years plus, to be exact, 1997, in the line of uh, Dr. Mikao Yusui, the founder, rediscoverer of Reiki, uh, to be exact, the Yusui Shihiki Ryoho, the natural system of healing by Dr. Mikao Yusui. And my teacher is uh, Dr. Nalin Rula of New Delhi, India. Uh, I wanted to discuss today about the five principles of Reiki given by Dr. Mikao Yusui. Uh, just to give a quick background for those of you not familiar with Reiki, Reiki is a term in Japanese mean the universal life force energy, Rei, universal and Ki energy. So there is a life force energy um, which is present in all things and all beings and is basically sustaining uh, life, all life uh, in the universe. And Dr. Mikao Yusui tapped into that beautiful power uh, more than 150 years ago in Mount Kuriyama while meditating deeply uh, and basically connecting to that divine light. Dr. Mikao Yusui uh, were teaching a lot of people over his lifetime and especially uh, working with the poor, the needy and those who uh, were in the position of required extra support and need. After some time he discovered that there are some issues that needs to be addressed in the term people interact with the universe and themselves and Reiki as well. So he went back to the mountain and came back with five precepts, uh, one may say, or five principles that if you look at them and meditate upon them, you can elevate any discomfort in your own life. And they can be like, a, you can say, a litmus paper uh, for you to evaluate where you stand physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. So the five principles of Reiki, uh, I'm going to name them one by one, and then we're going to dive deep into them. The five principles of Reiki are, just for today, I shall live in the attitude of gratitude. Just for today, I shall not fear or worry. Just for today, I shall not anger. Just for today, I shall do my work honestly. And the fifth principle, just for today, I shall respect my parents, my teachers, my elders, the entire universe and my own self. So if you notice, it is just for today. As the famous uh, saying from the Buddha, yesterday is already history, tomorrow is a mystery, and we only have this moment, this day, this uh, time to basically work on our life. So just for today. So the first principle Dr. Mikari Sui discussed was just for today I should live in the attitude of gratitude. So what does it mean living in attitude of gratitude? Actually it's a very elevated state where you basically are I would say kind of illuminated and free of complaint because you are grateful for everything coming your way. You give appreciation for everything that you have from the food to the water to relationship to life to this beautiful body. So everything is being in the mode of gratefulness and gratitude. To reach that state, you do require to work through your personal evolution where you are free of, I would say, complaint, free of hopelessness and helplessness. And it starts by action. So to reach a state of gratitude means that I am in responsibility and taking action for my life and therefore have a better appreciation for everything I have. I'm not coming from a hopeless position, but for more from an action oriented and gratitude will grow as I give gratitude to what I do, what I have and everything that is coming to me, of course, is from divine providence, you may say. But that's a very elevated state, uh, the first principle. You can say that uh, my spiritual master, uh, Nalin Rula, used to say that if you reach a place where you are free of any complaint for more than 24 hours, you are enlightened in the sense that there's not a shred of uh, reciprocation where you see something wrong. Now, it doesn't mean that if we see something wrong, we don't want to correct it, but we don't need to pass judgment on it. We can just work to fix on it. So just for today, I shall live in the attitude of gratitude, appreciating everything I have, being grateful to my body, to my life, to the food, nourishment, to the air and everything. So that's the first principle. So if you're not grateful, See what is it in your life that you are unappreciative of. Even in the worst condition, when somebody is about to die, there is still appreciation for the nurses and the doctors supporting him, to the family, to the alleviation of pain or whatever there is might be in, in that particular state. So every 
moment is an opportunity to be grateful to what we have, even though it might seem little or, or non-existent, it is there. As long as we exist, there's room for gratitude. All right, so that was the first one. The second one is just for today, I shall not fear or worry. Um, a big one. <laughs> a big one in the sense that fear is something that is seem to be dominant in many people's life out of the natural position. Yes, fear has a place. By the way, all the emotions have place and they're all very important, important and we can use them as tools of transformation. So fear, just for today, I should not fear or worry. Why not fear? Because, hey, of course, fear is basically uh, shutting my faculties and not allowing me to operate in a very harmonious way. So yes, if I see danger, I want to not go on the road when the car might uh, uh, you know, crush me or something. That is appropriate fear alert from the body. Hey, watch out, the, your body is in danger. That's fine. But when the fear factor is more dominant in my life, in the sense that it's permanent in many, many hours of the day, that's completely inharmonious. So why not? Why should I not fear? And this is taking me to a deeper uh, dive into the origin of yourself. So basically, if you are already in a, in a position where you see that you have an immortal self and you are basically a soul occupying a body and not a body with a soul, you understand that you are immortal. Therefore, even if your body has been taken, your consciousness, your identity will continue to exist. If you're still not in that uh, particular view, just consider this. Take a picture of yourself, uh, pictures that you have, uh, maybe your mother gave you from age seven to age 30 and, and five, six, seven, eight pictures, and you see yourself in gaps of seven years. And you see, hey, that's me, that's me, and that's also me, but it's completely different. You in the sense of bodily uh, manifestation. Who is this? The science will tell you that every seven years, the entire cycle of your cells in your body completely change, die out, and you one are born. So who are you? You're not your cell. So there's some kind of continuity that is moving throughout these pictures that you call body, that you call I, which is more eternal in nature. And that eternal consciousness is basically your eternal identity. There is a way to experience. You can just sit down, close your eyes, and meditate on the ingoing and outgoing of your breath, where you connect to the natural rhythm of your breathing, which is basically connecting you to, you, to your spirit. In the ancient uh, Vedic culture, there's a beautiful meditation, which is called the Soham. So, when you hear the sound vibration when the air flows in, it is, resembles so, and when the air comes out, hum, which is so I am, hum, spirit soul, meaning I am not this body. I am not even this mind, not even this thought. So who am I? I am a soul occupying a bodily uh, organism. And this is giving me the understanding that I will not cease to exist, therefore there is no room for fear. There is room for fear for particular issues, but not as a spiritual development. And recently there's a, a, a movie which I really like waiting for to come, which is Dune, is a remake uh, by great author Frank Herbert. Uh, if you saw the movie in 1984 or read the book, and there's a discussion there in the beginning of the book about the fact that the, uh, the main character is put into a test of putting his hand to a box where he's going to experience a lot of pain and, and basically causing him to fear or maybe taking out his hand. But if he's going to take out his hand, he's going to die. And he needs to conquer his fear. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box and you die. Well, it's in the box. Pain. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. And he's keeping repeating a mantra, a statement telling himself that fear is the mind killer. And I shall not fear, I shall face my fear. And you can see it in the, in the trailer, there's a whole uh, discussion about that. So basically, if you are able to conquer your em emotional fear on a lower sphere, you will be able to achieve higher uh, abilities in your life as an individual, in your career, in your relationship, 
in your bodily uh, aspect of running or cycling or whatever you want to do. So just for today, I shall not fear. And instead, I will connect to my eternal spirit self. And then I shall not worry. Again, worry and fear come together in the sense that worry is an expectation of something that has yet to manifest. It could be a fear of the unknown, fear of your death. It could be any worry that out there, my son is out and what's going on with him. But all these are basically speculation. Instead, you should focus on action-oriented aspect and just deal with what you need to deal now. So there's no need for you to worry because you also understand you are immortal and there's no wrong that can happen in that sense. Yes, challenges are there and, and you are definitely facing them, but you can overcome them by action and by particular positive interaction with the universe around you. Uh, so just for today, I should not fear or worry. Another aspect you want to consider about fear is that it's not only about fear of death. It could be fear of death of an issue, death of a relationship, death of career or money or whatever. So the fear factor in our life has changed. In ancient times, it'd be the fear of the tiger attacking us. But in today's world, it's more maybe the fear of the corona or the fear of uh, you know, any unknown challenges out there. But you can say many tigers may, that may attack you, but they're all paper tigers, most of them. And the real ones, you will face accordingly. So just for today, I shall not fear or worry. The third principle, just for today, I shall not anger. That's a big one to land. Now, who is angry? And should I be angry? Again, all emotions are fine. I can take anger and transform it into courage, into action. But if anger is very dominant and I'm a very angry individual and everything causes me to be uh, angry and unrestful, this is imbalance. So just for today, Shanat anger means that what? Why am I angry? What is the root cause of anger? The root cause of anger sits in my identity, in my perception of myself and the universe around me. And here my teacher, spiritual master Nalini Nurla, teaches that there are a few attributes of what I call myself or my ego. There is my positional self, my positional ego, where I am a father, I have children, uh, I'm a worker at a company, and I have various roles and responsibilities. It's a positional situation. That's fine. And there is also my eternal position, my eternal consciousness, spiritual soul con uh, uh, connection with the divine, which is beyond the body. And what is that aspect that causes me to be in anger is that when I step out of my natural position. So if, for example, you go out of the house and you decide to do something which is inappropriate according to you know, society terms and the cop catches you, and you are angry for doing something uh, not according to the rules and regulations of society, you're trying to impose your understanding on the cop. Who is going to win? The, the cop is going to win. He has a higher position. Who has the highest position of them all? The divine. So another metaphor would be the big general in the army commanding 100,000 troops going home and his wife telling him, can you take out the do dog out to for a walk? Who is going to determine uh, when we are stopping and the dog is going to take a leak, the general or the dog. So the position of the ego always changes. What happens is that when we are overstepping our boundary of position and trying to impose, so something or somebody or someone has done something which is not according to my rules and regulation in my uh, universe, you can say. So in our society world, there is government, there are rules and regulations, and there, are, and there is nature, who is way stronger than there is their divine. So if you understand that if you're driving on the road and somebody done inappropriate action, maybe he crossed you on the road, almost causing an accident, it's okay to uh, be upset, but let it go. There's no need to go overboard with that. It's okay to, to see someone who has done something wrong with you. Maybe he stole money from you or maybe uh, somebody was cheating or unloyal. Un uh, but that doesn't mean you have to stay angry for 20 years. You can let that go. You understand that is, that is universe. So if somebody did something which is not according to your understanding, either you work to correct it according to your capacity or you change it or you accept it. You, there is no need to get angry. Uh, another beautiful saying from uh, uh, Maya Angelou, if you don't like something, change it. If you can change it, 
change your attitude. Do not complain, she says, but do not be angry. You need to take the anger into positive action. So anger doesn't have to be a negative thing. In a positive sense, if you're getting angry, so you don't like something, okay, fine. What do you need to do to correct it? And that will lead us to the fourth principle doing, of doing my work honestly. So just to summarize, just for today, I shall not anger. I am connected to my eternal soul self, to the divine, and my eternal connection. I am in a position, sometimes a father, sometimes a son, sometimes a worker, whatever that may be. And I respect everything around me and everything that is coming my way. And if I see something I don't like, I'm going to work to change it. There's no need to keep that anger, that false ego. So moving out of my position or my eternal position is what we call the false ego. The false ego is I am the doer. I am the controller. I am better than you. I am the big boss and so on and so forth. It could be also the opposite, by the way, with the false ego. It could be I am so miserable. But talking about anger is when I actually move to my false ego position. Why is it false? Because I'm out of my position. It's okay to state something that needs to be corrected, but it doesn't make sense or helpful if you keep repeating being angry and angry and basically saying, I'm not willing to change. I'm staying where I am. You have to change. So if you have the big stick, you can enforce it. But many times you don't have the big stick. So change your attitude. Switch the, the, the outcome by doing your work honestly, by flipping it and basically being positively active. So just for today, I shall not anger. The fourth principle is just for today, I shall do my work honestly. What does it mean? It means in general to be diligent, to be committed, to take every possible action to bring the result in your life. It doesn't mean that we are the owner of the results. We are the owner of our action. You can bake a great cake, which you've bo baked already a hundred times. My favorite is a vegan carrot cake with a nice uh, cashew and date topping. But I put the cake in the oven and just today, electricity came out and the cake didn't rise in the oven. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. I just have to do the cake again. So we are committed to action. We are committed to the work and we are free from the desired result. Yes, we are definitely aiming for that, but we are letting go because we understand that the result is not in our hand, only action. So everything has to be coming from born action and that will also raise your gratitude, appreciation, because if you end your day and you say, did I do everything in my capacity to bring about the change I was looking to do? If it's studying or work or relationship, if the answer is yes, go to sleep. If not, okay, what I need to do tomorrow to make it a better, more complete process. But if I don't do it continuously, I will be resentful. I will be depressed and I will be inactive. So being a spiritualist, being a Reiki channel, being a person who is aiming to connect to the divine, to be a yogi, one who is connected to the divine, means that you are very, very much rooted in action because you cannot avoid action. It's part of your life. You breathe, you eat, you go where you need to go, and the cycle continues. So what you need to do is be totally responsible, totally involved in the moment, in what you do. Uh, and this is mean doing my work honestly, not just praying, oh, let me get a good job, but not doing any effort by going to interviews and doing CVs or wanting to lose 20 kilos, but not taking the diet and doing the exercise, just wishing. So don't be in the position of only wishing, wishing, wishing. That is very nice, but you have to complete it by taking diligent action. So just for today, I shall do my work honestly. The fifth principle is just for today, I shall respect my parents, my teachers, my elders, the entire universe, and of course, respect myself. Now, why should I respect my parents? Quite obvious, they gave me this body, even though my parents, not my parents, but someone's parents were not nice to him, or very maybe even mean or, or really negative, they still gave him the body. So I'm respectful for that, at least. I'm respectful for my teachers, for what? For giving me knowledge, helping me to progress, even the math, the math teacher, or the English teacher, and so on and so forth. And then respecting the entire universe. Respecting everything and everyone that comes my way. Think about a simple thing. Have you ever stopped for a second when you're eating your lunch and you eat your nice, warm rice? That there are a chain of human interaction that bring this rice to your plate. 
it's the workers in the field who are sitting there hours in the water and, and basically putting the seeds of the rice and then harvesting it and then the transportation and then the guys in the supermarket and then all the way to your plate. It's a huge chain work uh, of individuals who have done something to bring that rice. Yes, you pay the dollar for it, fine, but that's just the end of the cycle. Who is basically uh, repaying back Mother Earth? So we need to be respectful for everything we get, small and big. And of course, we need to also respect ourselves. We have value as well. Even though you feel depressed sometimes or somebody is not feeling that he's uh, uh, doing the best of whoever he needs to be, you are a beautiful soul self hosted in a body. My teacher once visited uh, South America and Colombia and he taught a local community there how to connect to that aspect of gratitude and respect by understanding that if you are alive, the divine has decided to reside within you and gave you a, a spark of life, you should be acknowledging that and understand the weight. If the divine decided I'm a value, then I am for sure I'm a value. So I, let me respect myself. And as a prayer, beautiful prayer called Om Namastute 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 Namo Nama or just Namastute Namo Nama, meaning I bow down to the divine within me. I acknowledge the, the, the light within me and I acknowledge the light within all beings. If you go to India and you see somebody and you say Namaste, I bow down not to your ego or personality, but to the divine within you. So let me respect my parents, my elders, my teachers, the entire universe, and of course myself. So if you look at the five principles we just discussed, think about uh, an image in your head of a tree. Think about a nice big tree which is sitting on the bank of a river. There is the tree, the big beautiful tree, and there is a reflection of the tree in the water. And think about the five principles actually upside down. What do I mean by that? To be in gratitude is fantastic, but it's a very elevated state of consciousness which needs to be a lot of work upon. But the most tangible, immediate, action-oriented is to be respectful for everything. So start your day by being respectful, by doing your work honestly, by not feeling or worry or angry, and then reach the highest state of gratitude. So my teacher used to say that for us to develop spiritually, the first gate, the first threshold to move into the spiritual world has to be respect. That's why if you put the five principles upside down, like the tree reflecting in the water, the fifth became the first in the sense that in our world, respect is the beginning of all interaction. If you want to gain knowledge, if, you're gonna, if you want to move in life and have friends and people in association, you have to be respectful, first of all, to yourself. So respect, and then doing my work honestly, not being angry, but doing action and correcting, free of fear, understanding my immortal self and connecting to that reality, and living in the attitude of gratitude. The five principles of Reiki. Just look at them. You can print them out, put them on your wall, on your uh, um, refrigerator, and they can be a kind of a feedback for your particular condition. So if you're not respectful, why? What is it that needs to be done in your attitude? If you are fearful, if you are hopeless, what does it mean? Are you doing your work honestly? Are you trying to elevate and correct everything that needs to be corrected in your life? So you need to take responsibility. Being a spiritual individual doesn't mean that you are now only on cloud nine and you are in meditation, there's nothing to do. No. It means that you are totally responsible and you are totally connected to both the material and spiritual alike. You're doing your work and you are doing your spiritual practice, your sadhana in Sanskrit. So yes, do your meditation, do your Reiki healing, do your spiritual activity and dive deep into your life, into your cooking, into your relationship, into your uh, cycling and exercise and work and everything. So in that way, you are completely integrating your life. It's like the Shiv Shakti symbol of uh, the Star of David of Shiv Shakti where one triangle goes up and the other goes down, meaning that you are completely harmonious in this lifetime and you are definitely striving to the stars and to the divine and you are accepting the divine in your life and you are centered at the heart. The heart is the uh, place where Reiki manifests in this universe as it flows from 
the higher chakras and at the end of the day to our hands and to everything in our life. So these are the five principles of Reiki. I hope you found that of interest and I shall be seeing you in the next videos. You're welcome to like and subscribe and you can also catch me on Instagram and Facebook. All right, thank you very much and see you in the next one.